All right, Sam. So I guess we unfortunately have to move past Whoopi Goldberg, although I'm trying to think if I can make one more point, but uh, something, <laughs> anything, but I can't. So let's move on to our next story about I... Johan Harry. Why don't you first tell us a little bit about this gentleman, his recent book, and then we'll get into the more interesting parts, perhaps. Of course, of course. I must say it has been a, it has been a very, very interesting and exciting yeah. week with Whoopi coming out with her new bit and then yeah. Yohan Harry. And, oh, uh, well, just giving a very brief introduction to the gentleman, although I don't want to spoil too many things as we discuss the two art, fantastic articles mm-hmm. by these two writers, which I hope... You're not saying to- that ironically. No, no, no. Oh, yeah. The articles are fantastic. Yeah. The article, uh, but the book that uh, the <laughs> author has, yeah, that's a different story. I would love to have one of these guys, by the way, if we actually yeah, yeah. If we're, be willing to come on our, on our channel, because I thought their criticisms was, and I haven't been, so, Johan Harry, he, he's an author who recently had a book out about uh, our attention and how our attention is under attack by the great and powerful algorithm and social media companies. But that's not it. It goes beyond social media, as he Mm -hmm. says. And this guy has written books before. Personally, I knew him from his uh, writings on psychology, depression, and environment. And while in his interviews, he came across as a very reasonable man, when you do read his books, you find out he's not very reasonable. Mm -hmm. And he's one of those authors that... uh, write about scientific stuff in a very magazine-y, op- opinion-eddy, uh, New York times way, which I despise, yeah. which is you write about a scientific issue with like some very little knowledge, as Alexander Pope put it, uh, would put it, that, you know, there you, you know some stuff and you just use that to construct these bullshit arguments that, in my view, bullshit arguments that are actually not very nuanced, even though they pretend to be. So... He's an author. He's a studied at Cambridge, I believe. He's a journalist. I mean, right? I mean, kind of. Author slash journalist. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, And his recent book, he decided to write his book after it came to his attention that he can't focus very well. And a lot of young people are working on this Snapchat Uh uh, attention time, whatever, whatever he says that. And uh, th- I'm so glad that we were on to him early. I mean, this is like, I mean, if this channel ever, you know, <laughs> we grow beyond the five subscribers that we have, uh, I would love it if like that would be something we associated to it with, which I called him out uh, very early on. We read an ar- article that was a part excerpt, excerpt so we didn't decide excerpt what's, of his the, book, yeah. <laughs> yeah, what's the correct pronunciation on that one. <laughs> so... Whatever Camier said of his book, <laughs> and, and we already made quite a lot of fun of him. Uh, he was the guy, if anybody has seen our video before, he was the guy who outed his godson as a porn addict <laughs> and <laughs> went on to, I mean, he, like somebody we will discuss later in this video, some uh, very mysterious guy, mm-hmm. he's also very good at hiding people's identities yeah. in a way that nobody would figure it out except anybody who reads the article yeah he so, pretty much yeah. he changed his godson's <laughs> last name but then you know he yeah, mentions yeah. as his godson so anybody who knows the author <laughs> himself whose name appeared on the article can easily know who the hell he's talking about so yeah he's like, <laughs> he yeah, didn't do much of service. yeah dropped and, out of his school at age nine porn addict disgusting and, yeah. snapchat <laughs> and he's like blaming social media on like the son on his on his godson being distracted and then he names three things i think one of them was snapchat if i'm not mistaken but then the second one is porn which is not really social media and then the third one is whatsapp which is not really a social media outlet in the same way you know you you chit chat your friends so he couldn't even back it with like a proper anecdotal example that made sense and we'll get back to the anecdotalness (laughs) of oh his whole hey, argument hey. so whoa, whoa. porn is very social media yeah. depending on what website <laughs> i guess so it was just he's fantastic and then he's you know i i was thinking this he's an example of how far you can get with a british accent mm-hmm. uh, you know it's just if you have a good posh british accent yeah. you can get very far you can just go you know our attention isn't been it isn't it's not your fault. Attention <laughs> is under attack from all sides, social media, but it goes beyond that. 
And the key thing to understand is that your attention didn't collapse, right? We keep thinking, I thought, there's something wrong with me. I'm not mm. strong enough. My willpower isn't strong enough. Your attention didn't collapse. Your attention's been stolen from you by a really big range of forces. We've got to understand what those forces are, and they range quite widely. There's some aspects of our tech. It's not all of our tech, but they range from the food we eat, which is ruining our focus, to the sleep we no longer get, to the hours we overwork and exhaust ourselves. Crystal, yeah. uh, you know, it goes beyond that. So, you know, it can get you very far. Just de- try, yeah. instead of studying, going to university, <laughs> like this stupid person has done, you should really focus on changing your accent. Anyway, the British I, accent has a lot of weight. You you're like, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> okay. I swear to God. Right? Even, like, the, yeah. I An American one story. doesn't have the same impact uh, whatsoever. Me, the Atlantic one, if you <laughs> can go full, uh, what's his name? What was his name? The guy, Gore Vidal's, uh, Gore, mm-hmm. Al Go- no, Gore Vidal's enemy. Buckley, Buckley. I'm like, oh, full Buckley. I'm mm-hmm. from New York. And I'm Does that still like, exist, oh. though? I feel like that's gone. I, and there are probably a couple <laughs> of people in Upper State New York. So, oh. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's I, a more, more, more of a teach than accent. Really. So <laughs> I yeah. want to also point out the one <laughs> crucial aspect of his argument, which is that it's not that, okay, people have problem focusing now, but Back in the day, people used to focus a lot more. And one of the professors that you sent me an article points out that in the book, he provides no such evidence (laughs) that people's focus has, you know, has deteriorated because you can, you know, because, okay, fine. Maybe people don't have too much focus now, but it (laughs) probably was the case back then. There are different kinds of distractions, but he provides no evidence. And we haven't been able to read the book, although we read the little extract Arts, from it extracts, and and also extracts. the professor who actually read the article he points out you know he has a nice line the book where he says there's no evidence provided there's <laughs> some shady one and the funny part is that some studies that he ref- that he refers to the Are authors so have shady. come out of it the authors have come and tweeted that this guy has misread misrepresented misrepresented their study completely and it doesn't say at all what it's saying and sorry did you point out how he had like it's not plagiarism issues. He had like beyond plagiarism uh, no, 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 issues. Sorry, That's I'm jumping at the, the gun of it here. I'm just yeah, getting yeah. excited. Sorry. Uh, let's just start with this. That uh, also, I am very happy that I think it was last week or a week before I said that I hate Breaking Bad, and uh-huh. literally, I think Breaking Points. Was, breaking Points, whatever. <laughs> breaking Bad. So, yeah, like, I like. What, what does that have to do with anything? Clarify. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna cause a controversy. I'm doing a whoopee right now. <laughs> No, breaking points because, like, literally, I think it was a day after we recorded that, or it was, it was still in my head, and I saw this guy, my enemy, on breaking <laughs> points, and Crystal going, I've been a huge fan of you for a long time, and I don't know exactly what she was a fan of because the thing this guy is known for, and it is ten years ago, but he has never fully explained or apologized for any of it, and I'll get to like that's what I found out in these articles. Uh, he's been uh, he's a admitted plagiarist and he's somebody who has used fake accounts to attack uh, other journalists that are critical of his work not on wikipedia that, on wikipedia and not to also mention that nick cohen among others have alleged that he's he uses his friendships and personal relationship to push us for a good coverage in media and stuff because he's a typical public school boy in my view I, I don't know if he's actually gone to a public school in the uk by the way he's are these school. super posh private schools that super, like he's got good connections clearly i mean that it seems to be the main thing yeah. he has more than you know anything else but you're right he's been uh, yes his previous work there has been pointed out that he's a plagiarist there has been pointed out that he's used uh, underhanded online tactics to smear his critics and he's Change admitted wikipedia page he's if I'm admitted not but not fully explained mm-hmm. that. and but <laughs> let yeah, me add that I'm, to that and because of those lies that he said now he put actually like segments of like interviews that he's claimed to done to have done with like professors and whatever to back his book he actually has to put clips of it on his yeah, website exactly. so people <laughs> believe him because he went and like he claimed that he had interviewed these people but he hadn't he just exactly. took their arguments from other places and again these articles that you shared with me one of the professors was saying that he went and listened to some of these audio clips and they didn't really add exactly. up <laughs> make sense of what he had written in the book he was like he's just misinterpreting all of it <laughs> 
So yeah, I mean, it's fantastic. But I was so happy that you know, like I'm, I you know, like these type of things. I hope tells you like Breaking Points is not a serious operation. That's just <laughs> I'm saying. If you've been a fan of this guy, you know. Anyway, I'm surprised we didn't get any backlash from that last time with our guests. Maybe with our sorry, with our viewers about oh, you know, I've Breaking Points. I've already alienated. I think so. We'll see. Maybe like, if this time. Yeah, bro. Like um, right now, at, at, at the moment, I mean, Yon Harry, he just he brings up this emotion in me, this feeling <laughs> that I want to fight. Uh, not physically, of course. I would never uh, condone or uh, even think about physical violence. But I would. I just love this. Yeah, I hope we get some backlash. <laughs> but there were two articles, both of them, in my view, very fantastically done. One was uh, by Stuart Ritchie. Yon Harry's Stolen Ideas. There is a little new evidence in his latest book. So that was the first one. And I'd like to read some parts from that. Um, shall I start? Please. Is it, yeah, yeah. So this article starts with, uh, what do you get if you repeatedly plagiarize? By the way, reference, I like to point out everything that I read in this article is reference to other things. And definitely check it out. It's on the website. Um, uh, oh, the great, by the way, article title, Unheard, as in heard with mm. an E, as in group of animals. Uh, I can't I can find uh, Don't website. worry about it. Through the Is name, it? they'll be able to find it. All right. Okay. Uh, through the headline. What do, you get, yeah. all right, all right. what do you get if you repeatedly plagiarize other people's work, allegedly fabricate code, and spend hours of your life editing the Wikipedia pages of your rivals under an assumed name to make them look bad? three massive book deals <laughs> you know that is so true like that's what he got in the end right and uh, in this article he goes uh, to say maybe there is nothing wrong with his tra- with this transformation he did after all apologize after a fashion for the plagiarism and the malicious editing perhaps he's now a reformed character worthy of rehabilitation but as jeremy duns has pointed out Harry has never provided a full account of everything he did wrong. His articles are still online without any flags from newspapers that publish them. And some of them make quite, well, surprising assertions. Mm -hmm. So very fantastic article, which points out his background problem. By the way, my headphone is, I might have to cut that. He goes on to, very very, uh, fantastically, he goes on to go into details about, uh, for example, this, like, this is from his second book. The neuroscientist Dean Burnett wrote an exasperated critique of an extract from Harry's second book, Lost Connections, which asked, is everything you know about depression wrong? Harry's condemnatory attitude to antidepressant drug, for example, wasn't exactly nuanced. And he made some truly bizarre and bizarrely untrue points, for example, that if your baby dies at 10 a.m., your doctor can diagnose you with a mental illness at 10.01 a.m. and start drugging you straight away. Like, exactly. (laughs) He's just this typical idiot asshole. Again, the writing belongs to op-ed pages of Guardian. I don't know if you get the same feeling from his writing. At most. I wouldn't at say best. at most. That is the lowest form of writing <laughs> yeah. opinion. It's so, I mean, I can't think of any worse type. I mean, the ones in the New York Times are some of the worst. Uh, but yeah, probably Gordy, everywhere. New York yeah. Times, yeah. Uh, I, I, he point, I think this is the best description of him and his work. Uh, he talks about, this is, uh, I, I'm fast forwarding through the article. He, he let me see, he talks about, that, that despite how true the attention problem seems, see, oh, sorry, sorry. It must be said, and on closer inspection, the people I know who complain the loudest about not being able to focus are people who still have managed to write tons of columns, mm-hmm. scientific papers, or even books in the past years. Even Harry mentions in passing that he wrote a 92,000 word novel while on his Cape Cod getaway, turning this story from an interesting self-help tale into a grotesque humble brag. I mean, grotesque humble brag is the <laughs> best way to describe this guy. This writer's like, hilarious. Yeah, I, I tried to, you know, you know, Crystal, you know, Crystal, I tried to turn my social studies uh, knowledge into a real <laughs> thing. So I traveled across the world from Moscow to Melbourne to Monaco to uh 
what are, what other M cities are? Yeah, please somebody help. Me. All M cities. I don't know why. Yeah, yeah. To uh, Ma uh, Ma Maloyer. <laughs> Iranian city. Maloyer. Iranian village. <laughs> He's visited there too. Uh, like uh, like this guy, by the way, like points out, for example that he talks about this thing that Facebook, you know, Facebook, for example, makes you disconnected from your friends, puts you in groups that puts you in a cul-de-sac. It doesn't allow you to connect with your friends. And well, imagine, imagine if you had, had a feature that you could only contact your close friends. Well, there is no need to imagine. Except Facebook does have exactly the feature that Harry claims it doesn't and couldn't exist. It's called nearby friends. <laughs> it gives you a little map of where your friends are physically at the moment if they have opted in. It's been available since 2004, uh, 2014. Uh, uh, a second, uh, a two second Google search would have enlightened Harry. Maybe he wrote that part of the book while he was in internet free isolation because he talks <laughs> yeah. about, oh my God, I created this thing. I put my mobile phone, my mobile phone was in this box and I couldn't, I couldn't like, touch this mobile phone and all that so i love this article that he's uh you know he's this this article yeah. unlike the, we talk about the second one this one is more focused on him as a writer i would say yeah the uh -huh. second one is more on the points that like you know that are made in the article so the actual arguments that are made in the book sorry uh yeah and uh, uh, so uh, let me just finish with the last uh, paragraph from this article. Despite all this, it seems that the media establishment, especially outside the UK, where his unethical past is less known, just can't get enough of him. His first book is apparently being made into a documentary, documentary series presented by Samuel L. Jackson. And from what he said in interviews, more nonfiction is forthcoming, mm -hmm. <laughs> not to mention the Cape Cod novel. But this is a writer who's shown himself again and again to be either untrustworthy, unoriginal, or uninformed. If he's right to say that our moments of focus are becoming ever more precious, isn't it time we started paying attention to someone, anyone else? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I mean, fantastic. No. Input. Uh, I would love to, Some they talk to this guy, but really enjoy like uh, because i felt i'm going crazy and you read somebody and you're like okay i'm not mad yeah. uh, he's a grifter and you know he lives in griftopia so you know and i mean why do you think that you know okay a to be serious for a second of course i mean i don't know if you have your phone next to you and all this stuff and you know someone's messaging you or you're checking your emails all the time you will get distracted so i mean I don't, nobody's disagreeing that he just the way that he turns it and the narrative and the scientific backing. And on top of that, his thesis that, you know, people are less and less able to focus. It's all of that that turns it into a bullshit thing. But, you know, why do you think that it's so popular? And I think I'm just going to play the clip right now a uh, second from when he goes in this Australian news show and what the anchor says in the beginning. So let's just listen quickly. This really hit home to me, Johan. Today when I was preparing to talk to you, I was so excited to talk to you. Um, I think this topic is absolutely deeply fascinating and urgent. I sat down to read some briefing notes um, that our team had prepared about the book. I listened to you and yet when I was sitting down to read the notes, um, it probably took me three or four goes to get through it um, and I was up and doing other things and <laughs> what's wrong with me? <laughs> what's wrong with this? So I think it just it's one of those arguments that he makes that kind of can resonate with Sorry, everybody yeah. it resonates yeah, yeah. with people easily you know this lady was like yeah i was trying to read my briefing notes this morning the anchor but i couldn't i mean i don't even know what she says if she's saying that she didn't understand or she couldn't focus i don't know which one it is <laughs> but yeah i think he's smart in the thing and of course the hate on social media is the other part he's, of his grifting which you know he claims a, it's not all about that but you know he's, he's smart. like a he's, he's like yeah. No, he's like Jordan Peterson mm. of the left in many ways. I feel very much parallels. He's, I would say, you point out why is this type of thing always has customers? Why does this type of thing has always a big market for it? Because I think humans have a tendency to want to feel they live in, besides the fact that they want to feel as special, let's put mm -hmm. that aside, they want to feel they live in exceptional times. Mm -hmm. It's always like the Good worst, point. oh my God, it's the worst, it's the worst, or oh my God, this is the best, most yeah. innovative time, most blood time. 
uh, like, and you see that all throughout history. And I think it's the same mindset that attracts people towards end of time cults. And, mm. uh, you know, yeah, uh, that of things. And as you correctly point out right now, if you're a, a slightly middle class liberal, it's so chic and invoke to criticize social media yeah. and oh my god it's so fleeting it's so fast as if you know everybody was reading google and yeah. uh, nabokov before the, the just, advent you know, of Facebook, plato's you know? republic you know people plato's go republic to dinner parties everywhere. him and his friends right because his other thing that yeah. he connects with only... is very anecdotal he's like you know my friend and, and I have been talking and, you know, we can't focus anymore, it seems. Yeah, we, and just like that person read, points out. We used to read Piney the Elder every week. Yeah. Now we can only read tweets. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. But, yeah, he's he's a... I mean, I think he's a dishonest actor completely. Uh, but, but that's why I think he's uh, sort of grift has, you know, has a... Uh, has a... What do you do? Has customers? Yeah. Has a, you know, it has a market, you know, uh, is, yeah, it's, it's really, truly disgusting. But now I just wanted to go to the, yeah, more scientific article by Dr. Matthew Sweet. Uh, so, and it's, uh, by the way, it has starts with a thing that I think this was an addendum or an update on mm-hmm. the story. So let's just start with that. Well, it's a tweet. I was booked to go on BBC Radio 4 uh, p.m., to challenge uh, at John Harry 101 about assertions made in his book. He has pulled out for personal reasons. So I'll just leave a thread about my concern about his (laughs) use of sources. I hope someone else will raise these questions. It was great. Can you hold on for a second? You thought that you're fed up with this guy. This guy was so pissed off that he couldn't argue with him face to face. Okay, I'm going to do something with this i'm gonna write a blog yeah. i don't give a yeah. shit I'm Gorilla my warfare. Known. motherfucker this is asymmetric warfare at this point i'm gonna come spray this shit on your house or i'm gonna build board i'm not gonna let you go he's like he's, like, he's, gonna, he's, he's lecturing and there's this guy that he, no you need to stop you need to stop he's just but i yeah. i i i mean I mean, this guy is a doctor, so I completely understand. And this guy's article was good in a way that because he had ex- extracts from the book. So and he actually read I the book, least... unlike us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Although... I, mean, I couldn't get it for free. So yeah. and I'm not going to spend my one month audible credit. on. And we read his book. huge ass long Guardian article. So if you really oh, had yeah, like have facts it. and stuff to, you know, back it up, you yeah, could have included it in that <laughs> Guardian article, which we read and dissected before. So. Oh, yeah. All right. Let's just start with this one. Let's I'm just going to read the first paragraph and then I'm going to fast forward through. Yeah. So a stolen focus, uh, a stolen focus, fo- a stolen focuses book is full of stats, full of references to scientific research. Can its author be trusted to handle this research, not to cherry pick to help his case? I'll let you judge. And then he starts looking at it at case by case examples. For example, uh, he looks at a Carnegie Mellon study, uh, a Carnegie Mellon, uh, in which they studied 126 students, uh, and uh, no, uh, John, Joanna Harry writes that the ones that were uh, allowed to have their phones on and were receiving text messages, they performed 20, 30 yeah. percent less than others in uh, tasks in whatever tests. And we, as a species, are losing our yeah. ability to use our brain power. And this is, oh my God, blah, blah, blah. Fill in the gaps. But this guy, the doctor writes, a Carnegie Mellon study sounds neuroscience mm-hmm. sounds conclusive. We imagine a students distracted by their texts and alerts and losing test marks. And then this is that. Everyone who uses a smartphone is reducing their powers of concentration by 20, 30%. Terrifying. Harry doesn't give you a source for this experiment, there is no footnote to follow. So it's hard for the reader to check his working. But here it is. The experiment was commissioned by the authors of a business self-help book called The Plateau Effect. Uh, So it's not peer reviewed. The the distracting messages mentioned were sent by by the experimenters and the subjects were told they contained important information about the test. They had to respond. So it tells you very little, nothing, I would <laughs> yeah. suggest, about the ordinary seduction of the smartphone. 
So I love I, 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 his passive aggressiveness and condescension, which is completely justified, is awesome. <laughs> I must say, I, this article was a joy to read. Yeah, I know. This one is that, great. Yeah. But make sure to also read one or two of those tweets by like the scientists that he had used and like referred to. I think they're included in the oh, article. Oh, we are getting there. Yeah. Oh, we are getting Does Johan Harry tells us this? No. Instead, he says his, this research suggests that our species, yes, our <laughs> species, is losing 20-30% of its brain power because it uses mobile phones. Is this a reasonable assertion? assertion? I would say no. I would call it cherry-picking and uh, exaggeration. I also, uh, this scientist points out that, that uh, the fact that our collective attention is uh, shrinking, uh, the idea has been a part of culture conversation for years and but an average attention span isn't taken seriously by very many academics as you said it is almost impossible to measure it you see and how do you measure the ones in the past even oh yeah i mean that one i think he has a line for it he has like an he has like a sentence or paragraph i should have highlighted myself where he says like it's not even possible to carry out those kind of studies in any case but Yeah, yeah. He, I mean, he goes on to write that uh, it was written up in the name. Uh, sorry. It, it, oh, no, I don't have that. No, it's fine. Anyway, continue. I'll get that. Don't worry. Yeah. So, uh, sorry. Yeah. Just one more thing for he, another study, for example, he mentions uh, was written up in the Journal of nature communications, the phenomena that the author, cons- uh, the phenomena that uh, Johan Harry talks about, the author of the article he has uh, cited concedes lacks a strong empirical foundation. <laughs> But does Yon Harry quote that? No, the paper is, is here uh, uh, and you can take a look at it from the article. So it's, I love the fact that even in his book, this recent book, he's doing he's reverted back to his older style. Yeah, I, and sorry, and do I found the, the, tweets? The, 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 I found the sentence I want to read. It was, yeah, it's about Stuart Ritchie. So that's why you couldn't find it. Sorry, it was in the other one. Oh, okay. And Yohan, um, Yohan, um, sorry, Yohan Harry, his name? Yohan y- Harry, Yohan, I, I think. Yeah, so he actually points it out himself, right? Because the author goes, but that's all anecdotal because, you know, Yohan keeps on going around and saying, me and my friends, we talk and we all lost our stuff and all that. Um, Harry, so it's not until more than halfway through the book, page 176, ah, that yes, Harry yes. drops what should be a bombshell. We don't have any long-term studies tracking changes in people's <laughs> ability to focus over time. In other words, he quietly admits that there isn't really any strong scientific evidence for the main thesis of the book. I think that one sums it up like the best. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> But yeah. And uh, just the la- last line from the uh, uh, scientist, Mr. Ma- what was it, Matthew something uh, article. One, uh, this is the last paragraph. Uh, one last thing. Joanna is vexed that Facebook doesn't allow you to find out if any of your friends are. Oh, near. you mentioned it Some as well. Some good news for him. It does. No, <laughs> I love it. It doesn't really mention. It's just a, <laughs> it does. <laughs> And then, do you want to read the tweets? But I, I, I mean. They're fantastic. I can just mention, yeah, oh, one or two yeah. of them. Sorry, just put the article away again now. But no, no. I have so it. Fi- <laughs> Philip Lorenz Spring, one of the scientists cited by Johan Harris, has tweeted, obviously, I'm not happy with the <laughs> misrepresentation of our results in this way. I keep emphasizing that these findings uh, is, I should, it should be R, not at all about your ability to focus, but about the growing complexity of public discourse. In parentheses, which I hope to do and see yeah. more research in the on, uh, on in the future. So this is just great that immediately the scientists that have he has cited are coming out against them. This is just a whole yeah. new level of interaction with the scientific and, community. You know, Wouldn't and sorry, you agree? Yeah. This shows also linking it to the previous fact checking and blah 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 with Joe Rogan. You know, this book. I'm assuming the publishers, quote unquote, fact checked it, right? Including uh, his previous book where he, you know, said that Facebook doesn't have any feature that can, you know, show you where your friends are. So, you know, this is this also shows some of the limitations of quote unquote fact checking that they want to be done to Joe Rogan. Sorry for that little uh, tangent no, argument, but uh, I thought I, it was I a com- perfect example. I completely agree. Yeah, it shows how manipulates 
how easily you can manipulate data and that's some and, if you studied social sciences yeah. that's majority of the yeah. topics and you know that and sorry by the way that was in the last paragraph from the article he goes on to talk about uh, this guy is actually much nicer than the other article he only mentions his past problems later in the article and points out a couple of other cases in which he completely manipulates uh, studies scientific studies by others so yeah i mean judge for yourself but at least i hope mm -hmm. you try to read the free stuff before you spend your money or your yeah. time on his uh, books yeah. and his strong things because he's not even that important a guy he's just a grifter that has found it yeah just okay I, if i complain about social media to these rich middle class uh, basically increasingly we all becoming victorian housewives with uh, hysteria and neurosis i can get a lot of money out of it yeah i know exactly he's like smart with the topic that he picked and like the way he addresses it and everybody everybody can relate to it coming you know they're from their own side and of course there is some truth to it you know in his guardian article he talks about i don't know if he just made that up himself or he found a study he's like you know um if you're like doing on your work and you get if you're doing your work and you get an email on your phone it's not just the 10 seconds or 15 seconds that you lose from looking at that your brain switch from one activity to another and it needs to you know recuperate you know or like get back in the zone when you're going back to your work so that's the thing there's some truth to it of course if you're getting messages and stuff you're going to get distracted but it doesn't support like i said the whole narrative that he puts and the historical lens that yeah, he man. kind of and adopts again it's kind of like going back to our main theme of like the guy on the bad faith podcast who i found fantastic was talking about like just first of all humans i don't know who, who like majority of us are not amazing creatures that are going to come up with great poetry, with great analysis and all that. I mean, some of us are, and good for them, but majority of us are just human beings. And this, again, I, I talked about this when we discussed this article. I used to live in, half of my time was spent in a rural area, disconnected from internet. But then when you know, I was in town, in city, we had mobile phones and all the, our generation, when we were like 10, maybe 12, so I've experienced both worlds in a very parallel shape and all that. And yeah, but majority of people like were bored out of their mind, <laughs> just going around trying to find someone to talk to and or somebody to, you know, spend time with. This idea that people used to have, used to again, read Anna Karanina in their spare time yeah. or be looking at fucking Vanity Fair, uh, the book, not the fucking magazine, mm -hmm. uh, or, or, or Barry Lyndon, whatever. I don't know. Like, what is, what do you think was going on yeah. back in the days? Like most people were just fucking around. They weren't, you know. I mean, just like now, it was a different. It was exactly. a different environment. There were different types of distractions. There were and, some exist now. Some have gone. Some have been accentuated. And, and you know, just uh, because there's like some differences, it doesn't mean you can add this whole narrative to it, which I feel like happens quite often with a lot it, of things. I mean. Another thing this guy has given me has been motivation to actually focus, just to prove this <laughs> guy wrong. I've been, man, Audible is awesome. I've, uh, since his shitty article, I've listened to Dead Souls by Google. Mm -hmm. I listened to Emma by Jane Austen. Now I'm uh, listening to Pride and Prejudice because, uh, you know, so fuck, like, okay, first of all, none of us are perfect, but yeah, if we put a little bit of effort, maybe we can do better. It's, why are you trying to pathologize and uh, well why yeah. because of money of course yeah <laughs> we had some fun right. stories again i think i'm all i, I think i've said story. everything i had to say i don't know about you i'm i'm looking let me this is like my whoopie goldberg mm. yeah because i'm like <laughs> any other angle i can criticize oh yes man one part as you said the whole thing about you know coming out of soon going back in the zone years passing it says you know as I, as I get older and trying to focus increasingly, I think he said it in the ABC interview, you increasingly feel like you're running up an escalator and it's becoming more and more difficult. Yes, you're getting older. You're getting older. Your brain power is going down. It's like, yeah, as I'm getting older, it feels like my back. There's more pain in my back. My knees are getting... Yes, people get older and brain functions usually tend to deteriorate 
especially 35 onwards. It's just, it's kind of like Matt Christman from Chapel Trap House uh, writes that usually like you get a lot of social scientists that they get older, they keep writing about how life sucks and all that. Mm. And they are actually objective correct mm-hmm. because it does, it has, it has <laughs> the suchness has increased for them because they got older, you yeah. idiot. <laughs> no, you were too nice with that. I don't even get that analogy. What does that have to do with the running of like, the As escalator? you get older, yeah. no, no, because reading and concentration is a physical thing that you... Yeah. Not necessarily, but usually most people, it deteriorates as they get older. I used to read far more. I used to be able, when I was a kid and all, to focus more. So I, that, that's part of the process of getting older. It has yeah. nothing to do with maybe, social media. Yeah. But you can also maybe, get maybe. better at it. I mean, I read now if more than practice, I did as a, as, yeah. a, as a kid because, yeah. you know, before no, no. I wasn't too much into reading. Now okay. I know what kind of books I like. But I kind of get it. But his, no, no, I okay. hate that no, running no. up the escalator analogy that yeah, you know, you know, I, I used that. to be extremely unhel- unhealthy as a teenager. I would eat unhealthily. I was super obese and all that. But then I changed my lifestyle. But it's still, though, as I get older, some parts of my yeah, body yeah, are, yeah. you know what I mean? That's like well, yeah. uh, old people find many things more difficult. No, that is I, that, not that he's <laughs> that old anyway. He talks about back in the days as if he uh back in the days in 1950s. Yeah, what are you talking right. about? No, he's like, oh my no, we looked the him up, thing. right? He's just 10 years older, uh, he's like yeah, early not, 40s. Yeah, he's like seven years <laughs> old. It's like <laughs> ridiculous guy. Well, yeah, but yeah, so anything yeah, else? I'm, ah, no, <laughs> I feel I feel a uh, burden has been left.